Hi, I'm Robert Hagen and welcome to my Facebook live stream. Now this is going to be, I would hope, not just the, uh, the first one, but I would like to do a number of these on a regular basis. I'd like you to, I'd like to walk you into my world as an artist, as a practicing artist. Whether you've got a, um, an interest in art uh, just as a hobby, or an interest in art as a, as a connoisseur of, good, of, of what looks good on a wall, or whether you've got a genuine interest in taking it to a, a, a entertaining as I can and keep it moving along so that you're not going to get bored or, or fall asleep on me. We don't want that. As the t-shirt says, and this is my motto of life, whatever it is, it says keep calm and something else. And I think it'll never grow up. Well, uh, well, that's about, that sums up my life pretty much. I didn't really get past about 16 or 17. older now so perhaps I am a bit past that but anyhow so what I want to do with you now or do with this event is to do a painting why not start off seeing an artist do what he does best or what he's done for most of his life and um, and I painted nearly all my life 40 years in fact so one of the things I'll, I'm going to touch on many aspects in in an artist's life not just how to paint a picture, but the inspiration that leads to a painting. Then the, the skills that are needed to, to make that painting work, and then the, the, the experience to be able to use those tools and use those skills to generate a final, attractive, riveting, I would hope, and, and, and magnetic painting. So there's also the other parts that go around all that and that is the general life of an artist. What does he do? How does he, how does he go about his routine? He's not, he's not regimented into a, a fixed um, a time code, a timeline of, 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 how, of everyday events, starting work at eight o'clock, finishing at four o'clock. That's not how I live. Um, where do I get my inspiration from? What happens around the, the studio where I, where I work? Where, where do I walk? What do I do? What, how do I enjoy the other time when I'm not painting? Since painting is my hobby, do I have another hobby? Well, I should have one, because painting at times does get pretty intense and very heavy on the heart and on the brain. So you need to relax with something else. So I'll show you all those little bits, those little facets of my life as an artist. Uh, staying away from whatever the, the personal side might be, just because they both intermingle, because one's related to the other, of course. Uh, but I can walk you through where I go and how I spend, uh, the day wandering around the paddocks here and around the trees and the little creek and, and all that and the bananas and all the plants that I've got and the little pathways and, and so on. How, what I eat and everything else. You got a question here? What do you look for when you look for inspiration? Uh, a question about inspiration. What do I look for? I look for something that's going to charge me up. First of all, it's got to connect with me and relate to one of my experiences perhaps or it's got to relate to something that I imagine. Um, and then when that, when that connection is, uh, takes place, if it's strong enough, it'll take me into the next level. That might be to investigate it more and then to try and capture that inspirational moment. So it could be just a girl walking on the beach. It might be a, a bird flying around around a tree. It could be the dog jumping after chasing a frog or a grasshopper. It could be just the, the light, the afternoon light on a flower. There's many little things that, 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 can, um, uh, can, that, that can interest me and spur me on to do something. So um, there's no, as an artist, you've, you've got an open, my brain, my mind is an open canvas. That's how it is. Um, and to this day, that's perhaps why I paint so many different subjects, because I don't have a boxed look at anything. I don't have a constraint around my, uh, around my aspirations or inspiration. So there we are. So, Feed me some questions if you want to know anything. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a little beach painting. I'm going to use some photographs because I'm not on the beach, but sometimes we'll go down on the beach maybe and come back again. We'll just see what the limitations and the latitude of this, of this format is. So, but for now, let's just stay within the studio here. And, um, and I'm going to work from these, these photographs here. I've got four or five of them there. So I'm going to put them together. And I'm going to try and come up with something that, that I've seen before, that a scene that I've liked, 
the, 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 the sort of atmosphere of the day that I like, the, the figures that relate to me in terms of being a, a good storyline, and the colours that I like. So I've got a palette over here. This is what we use to start a painting with. We've got brushes. So I've got a brush. Here's my brushes. There's my main brush, and that's a pastry brush used for good old kitchen pastry work, you know, for, for, for basking for, uh, and for baking and so forth. There's an, another brush, which is a, um, a watercolour brush, but it's a really good one. Um, sometimes I'll use one of these, which is a fan brush. You, I might use that today. And then I've got a, my improvised magnifier, right, which uh, we'll talk to, about later on and in, in other, in other uh, occasions we meet. But this is a prototype, but it's, the engineering is perfect for getting the detail out of the painting. But as you can see, it's a very dodgy and, and uh, ad hoc sort of bit of engineering there. But the lens is right, and the distance here between the lens and the, and the, and the platform at the base is correct distance. So you get a good magnification. Question, do you use the same colours for most of your paintings? Uh, do I use the same colours for most of my paintings? I start with a basic palette. And then I'll move off that according to what what the painting's going to be, the, 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 the sort of overall look of the painting. It's going to be cool or warm, or it's going to be uh, have a summertime look or a winter look. So, but I'll start with the same basic colours, and the basic colours are over here: the blue. That's the cobalt blue. I'll go to a light red, which is a dirty-looking red, and then I'll go to a yellow ochre and then I'll go to a white. So that's my basic palette for every painting. And then I'll ping it up with a few other exciting colours like a red. Over here I'm going to use a, a, a rose, which gives me a nice pink. I'm going to use a cerulean blue, which is more of a dinky blue. And I might use, I'm going to use a bit of uh, a yellow here, which is, I don't know what that is. And here I'll put, Whatever it is, it's got more power to it, it's got more zing and excitement to it than the other one. So that'll be my basic palette. I've got a thinner there. I'm going to put this brush in there like that. That's simple, isn't it, Bob? I'm going to use just the top part of this today. The next time we meet, I'll do another one down here, of something else maybe. So I don't want to do a big painting. Let's keep it small and, and try. here well I paint and that's what I do so here we go question yeah is creating art ever neat and tidy the question is is creating art ever neat and tidy uh, well the process is not neat and tidy but the end result should be neat and tidy so however you get to that end result is up to you but you, it's up to everyone to work out what the, how they lay their paints out and, and how they go about it all. Um, so there we go. So I'm going to add a little bit more thinner to that and go over to a little bit of the red. There it is there. I'm going to bring that down to the horizon. Now I'm going to make the horizon about there. It's about a third down. I'm going to join those up a little bit like that. And you know, folks, that is actually how you see it. You see, as you get down to the horizon, it greys off. And you can see I've got a clear blue and a clear grey there. Uh, question, will your shirt remain white while, while painting? <laughs> the question is, will I remain white no, like this? Shirt will, remain white. Will, will my shirt stay, stay clean and tidy during this process? Well, yes, it will. Um, I'm pretty, I've worked, worked in, a, in various outfits. Um, and they've all, I'm pretty neat and tidy. I don't need to get a lot of paint all over the place. So there we go, I'm just making it, moving that along now. Oh, you think that's all right. Now, I'm gonna add a, a cloud or two in there. So I'm gonna go to a bit of yellow ochre. What uh, thinner do you use? The thinner I'm using is turpentine <coughs> with a little bit of, a little bit of oil in it. Um, just to give it a bind, but that's, it's, it's nothing fancy. There we go. Put a bit over there. Now there, cloud. Some of them are some of them are, are more intense than others. 
I'll do a bit more there. See that? I can add more yellow and make the cloud stronger. Or I can push the, push the cloud into that grey and into the blue and almost make it go away. I might put a bit more of that yellow in the, in the grey down there. Now move it up and down. There's a little technique there. Now I've got no shadow in those clouds yet. I might do put a bit of shadow in there. This is not, we're not trying to be too smart today. We're just trying to do something which looks right. So I'll just lighten that up a little bit. Let's put a little bit of highlight on those clouds. So I'm going to come up with a bit more white. There we are. And I'm going to just drop a bit over there like that. And some there. Maybe a bit there. A oh, bit over there like that. Those distant clouds. I'm just creeping in. I'm going to run this. Let's just. I'm going to run more of this yellow into this sky here at the bottom. Lighten it up a little bit because as we get down to the horizon, it does lighten up. If you're not sure about this, go out and have a look. Just pushing one colour into the other, not trying to be too fancy and too smart about anything. Now, look, if you want to do a bit of shadow under there, it'd be easy enough. We'll take a little bit of that blue and a little bit of the light red. We'll mix up a bit of a grey like the one we had at the horizon. Now, if I put a bit of that after here, that gives us a shadow. Maybe there's a few more here. How about uh, just chasing that cloud there? Because shadows occur everywhere in clouds. And clouds don't really have firm edges. They sort of, they, they drift in and out. Down along the horizon here, you'll have a bit more like that. So there, that's, that sort of gets us to stage one of a sky. Now that didn't take long, and I only, only used one brush and just three colours. Cobalt blue, light red, and yellow ochre, and a bit of white. And I didn't try to create anything special, just a, the scene. Now, I'm gonna put a wave in. I'm gonna do the horizon water. Now the horizon water, as you know, when you look out, from the beach and you look at the horizon you see the horizon settles down and then you've got the, the line of the ocean and it's generally quite dark so what's that going to be well let's try a little bit of cable blue we'll mix it down here again we'll try a little bit of light red that'll give us our dark gray <coughs> excuse me there a little bit of that light red there we go and I'll put a little bit of yellow ochre in it because that'll take it into the green side. Now I'm going to wipe that across. Now, how does that look? That looks like a, I might be a bit low down there. Do you always work from photos? Um, I, I generally work from photos, but I take all my own photographs. I think the important thing here to say is that Every photograph I use, I've taken myself. And in other words, I've experienced the scene firsthand. I'm not simply looking at something like I'm looking through a box. I've experienced the event, the light. I've stayed in that scene for a while to experience the, the, the approach to that, that photograph or that scene I've taken and, the, and there and the time after that. So I've got, a, so in other words, the photograph is in my head in terms of the context. Oh, 
Okay, now for some water. Well, I'm going to be a bit flashy here. There's no real one technique here that I, I know of. I'm going to mix up a bit of green and and just sort of run it around in there. Now even that looks all right. You could imagine a, a wave in there. Well, let's try and we can do a wave in there. I'm going to go to a bit of a blue-gray now and see if I can just use the brush tapping it on on the edge, try the edge of it right okay well I, I can see something there let's see if we can put it bring it forward where this where it gets thinner and I'll put a bit of yellow in that sand area there now where we come forward and the whole those shots a bit more going now there we are that doesn't look too bad let's try it let's bring it forward a bit more so we'll make this water over here and a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. Mix it up a bit more and we'll bring that one, we'll put that in here. Right, there we are. That looks like a, a bit of a wave. Well, let's make that, I've left that white deliberately because I thought well let's let's leave a, a, some area there white I'm going to switch to a different brush now that's the fan brush so I'm going to pick up a bit of the I want to get that that look of a grey in there question how did you get started did anyone in particular inspire you um, I've been inspired over the years, not by one person, but by generally looking at, at art. I started off as a, as a boy just looking at art books and looking at Monet and, and just what was available in school and in libraries and what I saw in magazines and so forth. <coughs> I'd never had any education in art, so I came at it with a blank canvas, so to speak. So there's no preconceived direction that I, I pushed into. So what I, what, what I liked is what I found I liked, what I discovered that I liked was a natural uh, affinity I had with that, with ever, whatever it was that I, I sought out. And so I followed what I liked only, what I liked, not what other people directed me to like or thought I li might like. And so over the years, I, I just, um, I pursued, I've just followed my instincts because that's where I started with my instincts. So I've continued following my instincts and that's a pretty pure way of, of being honest with yourself. Um, I, I do think that an art school is, it can be very good for learning skills, but it should not, it should not um, be the starting point for where your direction is. So I, I've never had, I, I've never been um, um, pushed into a direction. I've found it myself. I'm just gonna put this, that gray, that gray is much the same as the gray up there. Of course, it's a it's a natural reflective surface. So now we've got a lot of we've got a lot of sand in there. We've got thin water over here. We haven't got any. You can't see any any un, un um, uh, unsaturated water there. Uh, sand there. I can put some in. Let's put a bit of unsaturated sand in there. So we're going to go to a light yellow. There we go. And it's pretty thick. So I'm going to just push that across in there like there's a bit of a shoal and then down here and come down. A bit more, not light enough. Okay, now we'll go. How long do you normally spend to complete a painting? Um, to do a painting, it might take me, one like this won't take me long as you'll see, but this is really an exercise in something I've done many times, so uh, I don't think too much about it. I'm just getting the, the look right um, so this one won't take me. I'm going to try and do it all in one hit though. So I'm now going to do the rolling wave. So it's going to be a bit of yellow in the white. 
Don't go white straight away. I'm going to try and just see what I can do with this brush. That's, that sort of works a bit. How about over here? Not bad. Okay, that's got a bit of a wave there, but let's do it more. Lighten it up a bit more, sorry. Let's come back here again, here we go. Right, that's about that. Let's do a little bit more up here now. I'm just going to drag, I'm going to use this brush now to find a couple of dark spots under the waves. So I'm going to go to, I'll go to the two main colours, which is a, uh, the light red and cobalt blue. I'm going to drag this across. Because under the waves you've got dark parts under waves. And you've got dark parts out there as well. And now you're starting to see, you should be seeing some, some formations now. Now, we'll do a bit more. I'm gonna drag the, the brush. And I'll try and find a color here through the waves a bit. Because you have that, the water's turning up the sand. And you have areas where you've got sand that's been rolled over and areas where the sand is retreating and settling down. Um, so you find a lot of little colours in there, mixed up in there. So I'll just add another bit of colour in there like that, a bit more yellow. There we are. Question, is your medium predominantly in oils? Do you draw? Um, I paint all in oils and uh, and I draw, I can draw quite naturally, but I don't bother about, I'll do some drawing in a moment when I start the figures. Okay, why don't we do the figures? Let's start some figures now. That's what I'd call a context there. So it's a, it's a scene that we can start to do something with now. Um, let me just do a little bit of a review, a couple of rivulets in here where the sand comes in. Just get it all sort of sorted out a bit. Okay, that'll do. Now let's do a figure. And the two figures here, I'm gonna use that one here which is a real nice picture, this, the light's coming behind the girl, to the side and behind. Um, it's a natural pose, you've got a nice loose shirt on there, Good, nice pink in here that we can pull out. And there's some light around the hair here, the hair's sort of broken up, so that's pretty good. And a nice hat on there, just a crown and glory. And so they've got nice light coming through here, down the side of the shirt. And I've got the, I like these creases down the back there, the little fold lines in the shirt. There's light on this side and down here and at the feet, so that'll anchor it nicely. And I'll put a tinkle of light down there. So that I'll use that figure. I won't use this one in this figure, in this scene because they, they're, they're walking away from each other. I like to have them engaged. So I'm going to use that girl there and I'm going to put this girl here. I like her action. The, the, the light is a little bit, almost the same. She's got a nice, nice sweep in the body here. Uh, the foot is nicely poised here, it's, it's showing movement rather than she's about to go forward, make another step. There's a nice nice anchor point down here, dark, and then there's, there's light up here. This is transparent here, I like that look in here, it'll fit in with this other girl. So that look will be the same. She's got a nice hat on there with a light cut clicking at the top and I'll put some light down around in here. So they'll both look pretty well together. I'll have this one more forward and this one just in front of her so that she'll be sort of looking where she's going and she's looking out to the sea. 
So there'll be, an, there'll be interreaction between these two. So let's see if we can make a start with that. Um, I haven't done too much, I haven't tried to do too much detail in here, I'm just trying to get a general look. So... Question, are those photos done for models? Uh, the, these photos, I, I hired these girls. Um, this girl is a Russian girl in Australia. This girl is an Aussie girl. Um, this girl is a Thai girl. This is a, the same two girls here. So yeah, I, I hire the girls, I buy all the, all the outfits and I have them mix and, mix and match them so that I can, I can get the colours that I want. Um, I let them also just go and do dress how they want, but I want free clothes. I want clothes that, that, that have got volume to them um, rather than tightness. If I, you know, we look for that in painting. We, you want that look of freedom in a painting. I'm just going to mark, I'm going to take out an area here where I can put that one girl. I'm going to lose a bit of that wave, that's all right, we'll build it up against some else. So I'm just going to scratch out an area there. She'll have her feet down there. And the other girl will be over there somewhere. She'll be behind there. So there we are. I've just taken out a bit of paint, which is what you do. I mean, I don't have to wipe it all off, just out some of it. Now, what I'll, I'm going to start with a forward girl. I'm going to use my, my um, high-tech um, mil million-dollar magnifier because I can use my glasses, and I wear glasses when I'm reading, and I can see quite well there, but I can't see as well as when I use this. If I want to see what's really going on just in here, right? what's going on on that hat there? in terms of where's the real light hitting there. Some of that's reflected light and some is sunlight. I need to know which is which. I need to see if there's actually a line down here. I want to know what that play of tone is in there. I want to find this line up in here. How thick and how thin is it? How light and how dark is it? What's the actual tonal value of that? Right. I need to know what that colour in here, that looks like a pink and an orange to me, but is it really that? So I'll put this over it and I should be able to see it more, better. Um, so that's the value of this magnifier. So it's, these glasses are pretty strong glasses, but they're not as strong as this. But the other thing about this is that I can see it, that area within the context. I'm not just looking at one thing there. If I just look at one part, it's not going to give me the, the actual tone value. So by, by looking at that area, I can see that tone in relation to that tone. If I've got like a, a stamp magnifier or, or a, a, a coin magnifier or a jewels magnifier, 10 times magnification, I'm stuck into here. And that doesn't tell me really what's going on. It gives me too much detail, too much information. So this is nicely balanced. So. Let's put in this figure. So I'm going to take my glasses off first. And I might put them back on again in a moment. I don't know what I'll do, I don't know what I'll do really. I'm going to mix up a bit of that pink. And there it is there. And I'm going to, I will put it on now. I'll put my glasses on now because I want to know where the canvas is. And I'm going to drop that in down here like this. I'm holding it there. And down it goes. And I'm not trying to get any um, particular colour yet. That's just a general colour for that pink. And there it is. That's what that dress sort of looks like. And of course, we've got the leg in there. So let's try and let's move up and get the, the shirt. So the shirt's a general blue there. Now, my eyes can tell me that, but there's shades of blue in there. So I'm going to find a general mid middle blue. Is it a blue or is it a little bit of pink in there? A little bit of pink in there. There we go, it's a mauve. Okay, here we go. Down there, find it up here. Goes around there, comes down, there, then it finds its way back up. Up we go. Question. Yeah. How did you market your work in the early years before you were, you were well established? Um, how did I market my works in the early years before I was established? I, it was pretty hard 
everything's pretty hard in art. Um, um, I just, I, I started off by going into school art shows and charity shows, things like that. Um, and I found they were able to supply me with um, a decent sort of living to keep on going while I learnt more about how to paint. Because it takes a long while. Even what I'm doing now, it looks pretty simple, and it is pretty simple, but it's not really that simple. Okay, now we're getting up there, getting towards the top of the head, and I want a dark now, so I'm gonna go the two darks I have, which is that, cobalt blue, and a, um, a light red. And I'll try and mix up a dark. I'll put the hair in now. We've got hair coming down here, up there, and there, like that. Down it goes across, to about there, I think. And it falls out to there, which is about equal to that. Comes down there, there. That one comes out more. And then the hat goes on. So the hat's up there somewhere. Okay. Now, let's, let's darken in. So what I've got so far is sort of a rough idea of the figure. This is too short here. I've got to make that a bit bigger. So let's do that. Goes down. That comes out there like that, then down, and then down to there. And then across. And there's light in there. So that's down to there. All right, now it looks a bit more balanced. I'm going to put a little bit for the hat. I want to find that hat. So a little bit of yellow. Comes down like that. And there, I've got the hat too high up, so I'm going to come down. There. Right, now that's better. Okay, now I'm going to mark in her leg. I'm going to lighten up first of all in her shirt. There's some light dark, light areas and some dark areas. There's light on this side. So I'll just sort of sketch in some of those lines and areas of lightness. It goes down there like that. And out there, and folds. A bit more, a bit more light there. Question from the net. Yeah. Do you use the same brush throughout? You use the same brush throughout your painting. Um, question from Lynette, do I use my do the same brush throughout the painting? I do. Yes, I don't. I've only got three brushes. And I can't understand why people have got so many brushes in their studio. But then again, everyone for their own, you know, we've all got our, our ways of doing things. And um, I have my way, but yeah, I use the same brush. And it comes down there like that. There we got that. Now we can just see that coming on now. Follow that line around there. Now I'm going to mark in her leg. Her leg's darker value there, you can see. So I'm going over here. Then I'm going to put some more of that blue in there to make that leg. You see the leg in here? So we want that in there. So let's try that, see if we can get that in there. There it is, it goes about there. It all comes in here too, but it's darkest in here. So down I go. And it lightens up, changes into a different colour down there. But we've got that in there now. There's a little bit on her sleeve there. And up in here, we've got some marks where that finds its way in here too. Okay. What is a favourite brush? This would be this brush here would be my favourite brush. It's the most versatile brush. It's a watercolour brush, but it doesn't. I use it for oils, 
because it just does the job. It's brilliant and it lasts forever. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't sort of destroy itself or I don't destroy it. I'll put that foot in now, see if I can, a little bit of yellow, a bit of, uh, uh, a bit darker in there. And her foot's going to be, you're going to have some sand or reflections or something there, I'll do. That's pretty thick paint there. Now her hands in here. Her fingers down there. And that over there, there's a hand in there somewhere. And that hat. And there's a bunch of flowers in there or something decorating that hat. Right, now I'm not going to do any light on that yet. I'm going to leave it like that and go on to the next figure. Now, here we go. Look at this figure then. Now I know I haven't used the magnifier yet. I, I will, what I will normally, what I'll do now though, I'll look at this figure because there's things happening in here that are very important. Like there's flower, there's flower sort of patterns on that dress. There's patterns in this, in the top she got in here as well. There's bits of red and yellow and green in that turquoise top. She got a, she got some some flower uh, pieces up here on the hat, and there's a braid around there. Um, and you can see here in the hair, they've got a bit of light on that blonde hair there. So there's things happening in this one that need to need to be looked at. So I will normally I'd sit and look at this for quite a while and have a good look at really what I've got to, what work I've got to do there. See even this even that even the. Um, highlight on the shoulder here. Now is it just a yellow and pink or is there an edge to there before you go into the skin the, the shadow skin tone? There is. There's a little bit of red in there. Could even be mauve. How am I going to find out? I'll use this. And I'll look at it and I can see that yes we're going into a deep red and then a, then, a, then into an orange as we move from the hair to the shoulder. Now normally you can't, I can't see that with my, with my eyes, with my, even with my glasses on, but I can with this. So they're the little things that make this painting, it'll make what I do a little bit different to what other people do. So let's go into it. So that we've got to find the block shape first. So here we go, I'm going to find that colour. I want to get, that's roughly it there. I might need, yeah that'll do. It's almost the same colour as the, as the background. Question from Kurt: Did galleries start to approach you for your work, or did you have to approach them? Uh, from Kurt, Kurt, when I first started, I had to approach the galleries. Look, I had <coughs> my paintings weren't very good when I first started. They had promise. People said, and they they liked what I did. I started painting elephants without any background, and birds without big macaws, and. And, and so on, without any back, girls' faces with hair flowing, without any background. In other words, they were really just drawings done in paint, in paint. And I had just left them white. The galleries sort of liked it because they were different to anyone else, and it broke the wall up. You put one of mine there, all of a sudden you got something completely different. It showed skill though, it showed that I could draw and I could manage colour. So um, at first they took them because they were different, not because they, had, they could see them as being saleable, it took them because it added another dimension to, the, to what was on the wall and gave the, the viewer a relief from the better works. Um, and the better works showed complete, uh, a, a, a complete arsenal of a professional experienced artist ability. And I'm a new artist, I'm young. I'm, I, I, and so, so I started like that. And then, but as I moved on, I started to understand more about art more about painting, not art, but I started to develop the technique of backgrounds and integrated the background, the foreground, and I went through all the usual problems an artist has with middle distance and so on and so on and so on. And eventually you, 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 you tool up and you, you get yourself at, at, to an experience level where the gallery will support you. They'll hang, they'll hang you because you're starting to, you've got the promise, you've got the potential, you've got the money-making ability for them and for you. And they recognise that. Well, some of them do, some of them don't. Uh, some of them run by clowns. But anyhow, so let's go back to this. So, putting a girl's figure in now, I've got to be careful how high I'm going there because she's just further, slightly in front of the other girl. 
I don't want her backside to be any higher than hers. It's got to be in proportion to where she is. Um, so I've got that in there. It's just the same sort of colour. Now we can get into this turquoise colour, which will be that. I'm just mix mix spot over here. Let's take a bit of this yellow and see if we can get that. That uh, oh, so I've got to go darker than that. Question from Jean: Do you do you ever have days where you can't paint as good? Gene, I have days when I can't paint at all. Um, so, some days I'm, I'm, I'm very, very good, and other days I'm burnt out. Um, but I can force myself, and I do often force myself to paint when I don't want to. But if a gallery rings me and says, oh, we just sold a painting, Bob, I mean, I'll just drop everything and go and do another one then. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, in that way, I've never really grown up because I still respond to basic stimuli. Um, so there are days when I can paint better than others. Now I've got this arm out here now. That arm pops out quite a way. Up it goes. And I'm stabbing away at it now, trying to get this the look that's got right in here, that, it's quite deceptive. You've got to look at that arm level, those two arms in relation to each other. This one's slightly lower than the other one, so I need to get that. These are the detail things that we need to ensure we get right, because at the end of the day, people, someone's going to look at this and say, geez, he's got the arms wrong, or he's got them right. But you need to do you get, get things as as well as you can. Some more blue there. So it's just loaded normally on a brush. There's nothing special about that. I've got a bit of yellow on there, but anyhow, let's just keep on going ahead here. It goes down like that, and I bend the elbow. Now, then it comes up. Now I'm watching this. I'm looking at this photo now, trying to get that bright, how that actual shape is. Question from Stephen. How do you get your proportions right when painting multiple figures? Um, well, like I did here, Stephen, when I'm putting this background figure in here, I'm looking at the, where her, her back, back side would be here, right, in relation to this one. Um, I'm keep putting myself low down. When I'm, show, when I'm putting these together, I'm, I'm, my eye level is basically there, not up there. When, you take, when I take the photographs, I drop down to my haunches I drop halfway down and take a photograph. So the point of so that the, 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 the my, my perspective is based on an eye level running through the middle of a body, not through the head. When people stand up and take a photograph of a beach and they're standing taking people, everything's slightly askew because the heads are always bigger than the than, than where the feet are. So to get rid of that that problem, that disproportion, I'll drop down halfway. So all my photographs, all I take. I'm sitting down like that. I'm down in the camera. I get down like this and take it down there, right? Not up here. That, that way, um, sometimes I can't get up because I'm just too fat. But I'm really, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be on top of that soon. Now, let's add a bit more. The skin colour, I'm just going to use a bit of uh, light red, no, no, a bit of ye yellow ochre and uh, a bit of light red somewhere. Whatever that colour there is, that'll do. Now here we go, because it doesn't, it's not it's only a small amount of area there. So and I'll put her leg. The foot. Now, let's put the hat. We've got a little bit of hair in there first, so let's put some I want it dark, so we're going to go to the light red, uh, to the blue, cobalt blue, and a little bit of light red over there. Come back here where you can mix it. There's a little spot there. Well, I want that colour. Under, under her hat here, we've got a little bit of hair showing. So we want that. Up there, like that. And then it goes around there. Come down here to the here, let's get this right. I've got her foot a bit wrong. 
got a nice angle on that foot. All right, now the hat. Now we're just, what we're doing so far is just putting in basic colors to build on. So this hat is basically yellow because there's many, many values in there. There's many tones in there, but for, for, to start with, we don't try and paint all those tones in, in, in little steps. We put the whole area in first. So let's get the, let's do our drawing part first. How big is that hat? How far out here does it go in relation to there? Draw it in. Don't worry about those flowers there yet. We'll get those later. Come back over here. Let's find this side. Is that far enough across? Her hat comes across, nearly across to her furthest and her elbow. I can go a little bit more. There we go. Okay, and up we go, and over. Okay, and a bit more, it's a bit flat up there, so we've got the top of that hat. It's just poking over there like that. Now, that has got her figure roughly in. Now, I don't know how, how this is really going, but um, we'll persevere and hopefully it'll turn out okay and we can keep on doing these. I mean, let's just see how we go anyhow. So stay with me out there, folks, and, and uh, let's just hope we, we can go somewhere with all this technology. Question from Ken. What are you holding in your hand besides a photograph? Uh, Tim or Kim? Tim. Tim. Tim, I'm holding that magnifier. That's what I'm holding. And I'm going to use that, now that I've put in, I've almost put the figures in, in terms of block areas and block co general colours. General colour, general tone. I haven't started digging in to see the little tones yet and the little movements in colour. And when I do that, I'm going to use this. I'll use the magnifier. That'll be, that'll be the instrument that gets, tells me what those little shifts in colour are, what the little shifts in tone are, and how, and what makes up that highlight? Is it just one stroke of colour for the highlight or is it two or three little movements in there? One of the big mistakes artists make is just bang on a highlight. Don't do that. You sneak up on a highlight. It's like trying to catch a rabbit or a mouse. The cat never goes in. He sort of hovers around that mouse. He waits for them. He watches the mouse to move. He looks at the mouse's eyes and his feet and his tail. And, he, and then he calibrates all that information into a move. And there might be one faint move that way, another one over here, until he goes for the big jump. And that's what I do with the, with the, um, with the highlights. I hover around, I look, I look though for, for the highlight, the last stroke, but are there build up strokes to that final highlight? And that I find out by using this. My, my naked eye won't do it, and even with these glasses on, it still doesn't do it. But this does it. So this is invaluable at this finishing stage. And let me tell you, it's at the finish where you win. No good coming, no good having a fast car and coming in 15th. You get nothing. It's no good having a fancy looking horse and the best looking jockey with, with, with a great looking hat on and, and, and it's no good having gold stirrups. The horse is still not going to win. So it's in the finishing. It's what, who comes fastest at the end. Question from Corian. When painting from reference photos, how do you know how to translate the colour and value to paint colours? Ah. For example, the white skirt in the picture seems a lot darker and more, and more purple grey, grey in, your photo, in your painting. Ah, okay, I, I haven't gone into the, into, the, um, into the finishing of this yet, right? What I do first, of course, the, the, the grey in here, the colour I've got here on this shirt, I haven't shown all of, I've just d developed some of the movements. I'm putting some lines there to show that, it, that, 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 that the top 
it's creased, that there's folds in there. But I haven't really developed any of the any more detail there yet. So I'm putting in at this stage general block colours. This colour is generally the same as that colour. I've got a leg which is coming, which is showing there. I've, here I've got a block colour of, of, uh, of, of a grey, of a mauve. I've got a little bit of pink coming in there and I've put some streaks in there, some lighter grey streaks. Right. Here I haven't developed any. There's floral designs in here. I haven't put them in yet. So we've got to sneak up to catch that mouse. We're like a cat, right? We're like a cat. Wait for the mouse to move. Move a bit, see what he does. Move a bit again, see what he does. If he moves again that way, you go that way, right? You're like a cat trying to catch that mouse. And we're doing the highlights is like that. Think of the cat and a mouse to get your highlights. Right? But the cat has got very good eyes. He's got very good, he's got very good, move, he's got great movement. So does the mouse. But we must, we must arm ourselves up. We must tool ourselves up with things that make us better than, than this, than what we see there. And this make, gives, make, turns us into a cat. A cat with severe, with, with great ability. Question from Crony. Do you sell those magnifiers, Robert? Ah, this magnifier, you're going to, we're not selling this yet. Well, I can't sell, I couldn't sell that. Look at it. I mean, you, I'd have to, you wouldn't buy it. You wouldn't. If I said, if I put that in a fancy box and said, look, here it is, this is the ultimate weapon for painting. Would you buy it? No, of course you wouldn't. You'd say, look, it's heap of rubbish. Well, at the moment it is, but it's technically a perfect item. But I'm in the, the, I'm in the process of, 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 um, of developing this, so you can buy it, all right? So stay with me on that. You're going to hear more news about that. Towards, in about three weeks, I'll have more definitive news about this item, all right? But I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to give up on it. And don't give up on me about this one either. Okay, let's go back to this. I want to find this, this, it's really not that blue, it's another blue, but let me, yeah, that'll do. There's light coming through that shirt. So we're adding those few little, just skipping some. Now we're starting to get it. Got a question here, just someone that lives in Hawaii wants to know if these will be on YouTube or if you can do them at a better hour. So maybe you stagger. Well, I'll go to Hawaii, right? I'll go to one and stream from there. Then you can get it live time and you can sit here with me and watch me. Um, so, we'll, have to, well, we, we're just trying this time at the moment. I know it's, an, it's a pretty uh, ungodly time for those in America. Um, too early for you over there. Um, but uh, next time, maybe we can do it later on so that it's... A, what time is it in Hawaii now? Uh, 12.30 at night. Well, it's too late for you guys. You should be in bed anyhow. You shouldn't be watching me. If you're over 21, you should be in bed. Yeah, Mary from New Zealand watching. Yeah, Mary. Christchurch. Hi, Mary from New Zealand in Christchurch. I've been there. It's a lovely place. I have some good friends in New Zealand. So I'm putting in the, the hat and you can see I've just put some lines in there to show and now darken that. I'm reading that the tone now of where it gets darker and you'll see that by just darkening that I'm leaving the parts that are going to be light there. So you can see down here there's going to be a light clip there. So by finding that middle tone first and using that and then dropping down a value, I'm able to find the... Now let me, let me show you something. Let's go do one highlight, one or two highlights and see how this pops. I'm going to go to... Uh, 
I'm looking at the, I'm looking at my magnifying now. Notice how I'm holding it. I'm working on her. Can you see in there? That's what I can see. That's what you can see. Right now, I'm looking in there myself now. Not use, not through my glasses. My eyes are going at the top of the reading glasses and looking there. So you don't need to wear. If you wear glasses with this, you don't need to, to look through your glasses. You look over the top of them. So the, this is a this is a. a um, a spherical lens. Right? It's very forgiving. Um, it's it's a, it's normally a split lens, but that's why you don't need to calibrate it. Okay. So if you if you've got a, if you've got weak eyes, you'll still just look through here, find your position with the the eye, and it's got perfect focus. Okay. So it forgives everyone. I'll put this highlight on this hat and just to see if this makes sense. Sheila, watching it from 5.30am in Maine. 5.30, Sheila, you should be in bed. Well, thank you from all the way from Maine. And, uh, and Sheila, I love the lobsters there. I had one in Cohasset about 20 years ago. I was told to go to Cohasset, um, outside Boston, down on the, so I drove down there and I had a beautiful lobster. I must say, and I still remember it, and I must go back and have some more. So, but don't put me off here. The, the lobster, if I had a lobster now, I'd definitely drop the painting. A uh, question from Justine Wardle. How do you hold the picture against the glass? Ah, Justine, have a look at this, right? Fingers underneath, two fingers on the top, and the thumb. And it's all, all it's not heavy, it's very light, right? So just hold it like that, and it's it's not it hasn't got a great a great diameter there. So it's, it, children can hold this as well. So it's not it's not heavy. So it goes in there. I'll put the fingers there like that. So that I'm holding the photograph quite easily, and I can move it around. If I go too far there, I can fold that over and then go to the next part. So there's nothing, there's nothing on the market that does this work for us. So that's why it's important I, I do something about this. Now I'm going to put a little bit of yellow where her hair is. Remember he said, I can see that when I look through here. I said, oh, there's a bit of hair down there. Now can you see that? That little bit of yellow? Now that normally you wouldn't see that. But that's a detail that makes the painting work. Now I want I now want the, the skin colour. So I'm going to mix up a bit of the yellow and a bit of the red and get to and then put it on here. Connie from North Carolina says you're making her insomnia much more enjoyable. <laughs> making her what? Then? Insomnia. <laughs> well Connie, thank you very much. Now that's the skin, that's the highlight there. Now I'm going to hit that again in a moment with one more to bring that right on the ed, edge of that shoulder. There's another one. See, see if I can do it now. This is wet on wet, folks. It's not easy. But I want a little bit more yellow in there because it's, it's less pink. There we are. Now, how have I loaded? I've got it on the end of the brush, just a little bit there. Now I'm going to drop that right on. Right, and put my finger here and drop it there. There we are, that's it. You see that little hit there? That you couldn't get if you didn't have that. Right, say no more, say no more, say no more. Moving on, and I'll do a little bit down here in the foot. Right, we've got to take that little bit away from there. I'm going to clean this brush. And that's got to go away from there. All right, and you can just see that. Now, let's go down, let's put some highlight in that shirt. First of all, we've got, a, we've got a, a hem there in that shirt. So you want to put that hem in. So the hem, make it a bit darker. There it is, goes there. And it goes around there. And it pops up there, it's got a bit of a collar there. And down it comes. 
and then it's in here like this and it comes down like that and then it goes down the bottom like that and there's some lines down there okay now I'm going to put some highlight in there now see if we can pull that part out now another trick I do I said I'm going to now this is something I'd never show anyone but I'll show you now because this is the first time I've done this right. when I when I clean the brush from that last one I do that and I just drag it between my two fingers there and it gives me a chisel it doesn't really not much of one there so I'll do it again right and that is how I get those little highlights I create the chisel now look, I'm down here, I need a bit of that colour there, where is it over here, look over here. Now I'm going to mix it just a little spot there. I've still got the chisel. Right, now over we go again, I'll put this with a magnifier. There we go, where am I? I'm over here. down here, don't no worry. I'm using the magnifier now. This is all magnifier work. My eyes wouldn't be able to do this. Right, now you can see that's, you got the light coming through that fabric now. All right, let's see if we can go down the dress and put in a little bit of that floral work. Now again, the floral work sort of comes through what I can see there. You can see with the naked eye, there's little flowers in this dress. There's a pattern. Well, actually, where, what is it? So I'll go in here and look at it, and that'll tell me. Right that one spot there, you can see there's a flower. And it's pink and red. So let me do that. So find that colour. There they are, pink and red together. Mix it over here a bit. Mix it in. Get it so it's... Oh, no, drop a bit of that in there. It's just on the fold where me is. There's a little bit up there. Got a viewer from Bend, Oregon, Connie. Okay, Connie, yeah. And someone asked, Froney, I read your article once about using a mother colour. Do you still do that, Robert? Yeah, I still, uh, Tony, I still use a mother colour. And that's where, when we started this today, they're the colours I'm using here. And you see, I've got the three mother colours. Yellow ochre, light red, cobalt blue. So those three hold the painting together. They're, they're, they're in all parts of the painting. One or two of those or all three together are mixed in with every other mix. And that's why there's unity. That's why there's a, there's a sense of good order. Um, a little bit like a car. If you've got a car and you've got a size 16 inch wheel on one and a 20 inch on another, and a 14 inch and then a 28 inch. The car will not go along smoothly. The car will be all over the place, all right? Like a painting. You've got to have, you got to have colors that work together well, that when mixed together, hold together and look right, okay? You don't want something like a phthalo blue mixed in with something that's got a huge chroma to it, mixed in with something that's got a low chroma to it, right? So those colors that get together, they break back the same way with white. When you add white to each one, they break back about the same way. So they, they're good order, and they're, and they, and they're a grey colour. So all that background is done with those. Right, now do this button. Let's go back here. Now the bottom of that dress is, goes darker, so I'm going to mix in a darker colour there. And it goes where the leg turns. There's a bit of a turn there, and then it goes, it follows the calf muscle down.
and it goes out, it flares out there, which we can show. There's a bit of a turn there, and now it's a bit darker there, and the butt comes out there like that. So now, that's the dress. Now let's do some highlight in that dress. Let's see if we can pull that dress out a bit more. Where is the highlight? I'm looking down through the magnifier, and we've got to go to that colour, which is that one there. So we need light white added to that colour to get our highlight. There we are, we've got, a, we've got a point. Now, where is it? Where is it? There's a bit there. Got to give a shout out to Will Hine, Dad. Bill? Will. Bill. Will Hine. Will Hine. Hey. Right. Hey, Will. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us, Will. Whereabouts is Will? And there we go, and down here. And then it, we've got light coming through here. Now, there we are. That's that girl. Almost done. Okay. Now let's go to our, other, our forward girl now. We can come back and, and do a little bit, bit more on that later, if we need to, but it looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Now let's see if we can, we can do a bit more on this other girl. I'll move along. Let's go. I want to go back to this dress here, this shawl, this shirt she's got on. There's some things happening in here that we've got to sort of get right. There's light up here. And it's, there's folds there. Then it's light in here. And there's folds coming across there like that. goes down there and then there's a frill there's an embroidered frill around that shirt we need to put in let me find that there's a bit of brown that goes around that shirt where the embroidery is see if we can pick that it's a nice line actually and it goes in like that and it's on the sleeve some there comes down in there and then it comes it falls down and it comes finds its way again here Question it comes out D, there do you do you still use that small paintbrush on very large paintings d thanks for joining us but do i use this small brush on all size paintings big and small it's just the best brush it really is the best brush let's get this hat Sort it out a bit. Okay, now I got that. We're showing that there's a bit of there's a little bit of embroidery I missed over here, which we need to do just there. That tells us the hand is there. So the embroidery runs around, and it finds us, that colour finds its way down in here a little bit. I can see that. Let's do it. Let's put in a few little highlights in there now and see what we can do. Right, I want to find the hair, go up to the hair first. Yellow ochre. And looking through here, I can see that we've got a brown there, but it actually turns golden. But there's two golden touches here. There's this one, then there's another one. There's also on the top of the hat. Okay, now let's. Let's hit that golden one again. What did I do before? I did that. I got myself a, an edge. And then I'm gonna get myself a bit of yellow. I'll bring it over here somewhere. Play around with it till I get a nice light golden. There we are. Question, why is the sky darker near the horizon? Um, Wait there. Right 
Right. The, I've, I've used normally. You see, here's where we, here's where we. Where the, the question is, why is the horizon darker than the than the rest of the sky? I do that because I'm putting figures in. If this was a landscape painting, just purely landscape painting, I wouldn't do that unless I saw it like that. I mean, there are times there are times when there's wind, when there, when there's, a, there's an amount of air movement that blurs the horizon because the, the air picks up the water vapour and, um, and so you get a, a, a layer of water vapour just above, a thick layer of water, water vapour just above the, the ocean surface. So there are times when it does appear like that. But normally on a summer's day, it's just a straight line across there. It's quite a, quite a sharp one too. But that doesn't sit well when you're doing figures. I want to concentrate on the figures. When you've got sharp lines like that, you're, you're competing against lines in the figure. I don't want to compete against those, those lines. I want these lines to be the dominant lines. So, uh, so I'll, I'll, make, I'll pick up little bits and pieces as we come forward in a moment to give us some, some lines, but not too many. They're the dots and dashes at the end. But generally speaking, going back to the question, you, the thing that controls the detail throughout the painting are the figures, right? So you, you, you calibrate things after the figures. I'm going to do a highlight now down the side of the shirt. I'm looking at that one now. So there's, a, there's something happening there. And then down here. Got a viewer from London, Dad, Mick. Uh, hey, Mick. Welcome, Mick, to uh, our inaugural. Welcome to our inaugural um, uh, Facebook um, um, live broadcast streaming. That's a little up there. There's a collar that comes down. And then in here we've got a nice bit of transparency. Now we can see that coming out now. Now the dress, let's get some pink in there. And there's a little bit that tinkles its way down here like this. It comes down. And there's some over here. coming inside, showing something in there. Now that's really starting to look pretty nice. Okay. Now, I'll look at the feet there a bit more and I'll, I'll do a bit more on those feet. Don't worry too much about the tone here. There should be a bit of grey in there. But now where are we? Down in here. And a bit of that colour's in there. And back over to her. skin. Now we have the flowers up there. I need to darken that under there and make her hair darker. Okay, so we go to our darkest dark. Our darkest dark is cobalt blue. Going back to our, our earlier um, inquiry, our earlier question. Mother colours, yeah. This is our darkest one, which is our mother colour. Question from Karen. Why did you choose those particular clothes? The textures, the transparencies, um, etc. I chose these clothes because, first of all, when I'm when I'm picking out clothes, I want to go for something that's that's that, that is feminine. I mean, you don't get many men wearing a, these colours, to be quite honest. So. I go for ones that are that are feminine initially. Now what I'm doing here 
I'm reinforcing the, 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 the light aspect. So let's get down here. I need a bit more of this colour here. Jim Gentry from Louisiana, USA says good morning. Morning Jim, Louisiana. Love the love the area, love the gumbo. I love the, what was the place you stayed there? Um, apart from New Orleans, but what was the other place? What was the name of it? Outside New Orleans, Jim, about 20 kilometres on the coast where the oil rigs are. There's a great place there where they serve gumbo and the crawdads. Absolutely unbelievable. You're in the best part of the world there, Jim. Stay there. Um, all right, now I think what we'll do is we'll put a little shadow line underneath the feet there now. And that, that'll settle them both in. Gives it, it anchors them into the place. Now what I'll do, I'm going to put it, now here we go, without, and it's not crawdads, we can't go on the beach without seeing, what is it, flap, 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 birds, so birds are the next thing. Pigeons, pigeons. No, there are no pigeons, my son just said pigeons, sparrows, pigeons, galahs, cockatoos, eagles, how about seagulls. So, we'll put a couple of these flapping around, and here we go, I'll do maybe a couple. This is interesting, I'll do these. Again, we go to a general colour, and I'm going to put one in the front of her here, this one. I'm going to put that one here, flying around. Do the wing, down it comes. And down it goes like that. Other parts there, then the body, and the tail, a little bit on the back, um, now I'll let that one dry a little bit and I'll do another one over here, this one up here, how about one over there, about there, this one's got to be a bit smaller, it's sort of squawking he's got his head up in the air and he's squawking and i'll put this other one just beside the same one i did just there another one just there there should be more but anyhow you can put one on the beach down here as well if you want to let's put one let's put one here tom from south carolina says good morning and wants to know when the magnifier will be ready for sale. Tom, that's a very good question and good morning to you, sir. From, was it North Carolina? South. South Carolina, good spot. Um, hopefully in about two months, Tom. I'm going to, I, I, there'll be more, I'll be saying more about this both on the website and, in, and on Facebook in a couple of weeks, maybe two or three weeks, I'll have something to tell you about there and how you can, how you can get, get hold of one of them. You, I mean, you really, order. you really have to have them. But I'm going through a pro I'm just getting it organised now, if you know what I mean. After all these years, I sort of procrastinated and said yes or no and yes, and I fiddled around with various types and lenses and so forth, but uh, the lens I've got in here is the one, is the one I'm actually going to use. Um, and I'm making it myself because it's got to be right. Otherwise, if it's not right, it's wrong. So in a few, in a, stay with me on that one. In a few months, we'll have them. We'll all be able to say we're painting properly. Now I want to, in that, in that, see, I've, I've just laid in a grey, right? And I've got, I'm showing where there's a deeper grey and a lighter grey. But now, of course, we've got, 
we've got the re reflected colour coming up from here. So underneath those birds, you'll have an orange, you know, you'll have this, this biscuity colour. Now, if you look here, even on a photograph, you've got that. This was taken on a, on a, in, in Australia, this one. I've got some there from America, many of them. And when, it, when it's under, under on the, if it's on sand or, or sand with a light colour of grass, with a, with a light spray of grass on it, you get that colour reflected into the body and the underside. And you can see it there. Now, to get it really right, you put that over it. And then, then you can see what's really happening. So I'm going to do that. So I still, when I, when, I, when I look at these first up, you can see I've got it to my eye now. And I don't want to get this right. So I want to get that colour. There it is, it starts up there. And it comes down around his belly, pretty strong. Then it goes off there. Now it's also down on the wing in here. So I'm going to paddle that in there a little bit like that. And so there we are. Now that's that part. Now I've got the highlight to go on there and his legs. Of course, you, most people don't put seagull's legs in because they can't see them. I can, because I've got this. Now, highlight here. And the highlight down, there's a backlight down the, down the wing. That's right, now I've got this wing. Now I've got the tail. Messed that up a bit there, but that's all right. Okay, but that's how it works. Question from Kurt, Northern New South Wales, wants to know if you have a form light to set up your focal point in your paintings. Um, I don't have a formula. No, I, well, I do. I do in a way. Um, the focal point is never in the middle. It depends where or how I want to balance them. And when I started this, <clears throat> I put these two in the middle because I knew. By adding birds, I can I can I can get the the, the fulcrum right, and so there's there's not a weight on one side or a weight on the other side. There's an equal distribution of importance. And the importance comes from the it's not just a distribution. It's not just a block of figures. But it's a distribution of light and dark and colour and contrast. So there's no there's no uh, let me do this up here. Back down here, I want to. Now, we've got a nice light there. I want this in there. Now you can see that. Now, this one here, even though it's just it's only a light grey there, it's still critical to get the, the highlights. Now, let's get this bird down here. Now, it doesn't look like a bird yet, does it? Well, let's see if we can make it into a bird. There's a head, that's going to be, and there's a tail. Now, let's see if I can add a bit of contrast, which is all we're going to do. And there's that wing. And it goes down there like that. And here we are, now we're starting to get there. There's the other one. There's the body underneath it. He's got his head half raised. Right, so that's going to be the seagull. Now, it won't be a seagull until I put the legs on. I'm going to do another brush. Here's another brush. Now, this one's got about one, two, three, about 50 hairs on it. Not many. And I'll use that now, if I can get a point to it, to put the legs on. Question from Karen. Do you, do you use medium with your oils? If so, which one? I don't use any medium with my oils. I now that looks pretty good now. Now let's just put the put a few little um, shadow marks underneath that one we need to get that just show his leg there can't really get that that'll do it i 
I could put in, normally I'd put a lot of little pebbles, pe pebbles in here and so forth, but what I'll do now, going back to an earlier inquiry about composition, now I'll, I'll, in detail, now I'll work the background and bring it into line with the rest of the painting. So let's work up how much of this wave am I going to show? Maybe a bit more there, a bit more, some more highlights there. We'll just put in a little bit of a wave in there. That's detailing it up a bit more. Let's go again over here. And there it is there, it's coming through there. Well, let's just make that wave go through there. Another one start there. Let's come in and cut against her dress. away and a bit more there and I'll tinkle a little bit more on here then we're going to close off in a moment I'll, and I'll just all right that'll do for now let's just Take that <coughs> master tape off there and let's have a look at what we've got. And that's what we've got. All right. And that's a nice little painting. I'll sign that. Let me sign it. We should sign it, should I, Graham? Sign it. My son said sign it. And what do we do with it? Well, if you like it, if you want this painting, because you've seen how I did it, you can. Um, Nearly got it. You can make me an offer. There you go. It's all done and dusted. Nice little painting that is. Have a good look at it. You can see up close, you can see what I've done. If, if you want to learn how, how I do paint, you want to see how I really paint. If you had one painting like this, you'll see it. Particularly if you, because I'm not doing anything special. If you wanted that painting, I'll, I'll get those photographs copied and send it to you so you've got the photographs to work from as well. Um, so that's one of the things I think if we can do, if we can stream like this, then it'll be something that you can use to learn from um, <clears throat> and improve your art. With. Um, I think this is recorded. Isn't it Graham? It's recorded it's somewhere so, or somehow so right? I think what I think, folks, that they record this <coughs> this this one hour, and you can download it some other, somewhere else later on. I think that's how it works. But anyhow, we'll find out in due course. But um, that's a nice little painting. That'll look great on anyone's wall with a nice frame around that. It's all it's all gung ho. Um, I don't have a frame on a small one, but I could show you. Yes, I do. Hang on. I can show you what it looked like with a big one. This is going around another painting there, but you can see that it looked pretty spectacular. So if you, um, I'll do another one. I'll try and do two of these a week maybe. <clears throat> but we'll post up the time so that we can bring in those in North America on a more reasonable time when we're perhaps all free. Uh, we'll make it about what time over here would it be? It'd be in the morning in North America, it'd be night time here, so probably be about 10 o'clock here would make it about 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock over there. Yeah, probably 11 o'clock at night would be a good time. 11 o'clock at night yeah. for us here yeah. would make it about eight, 9 o'clock your time yeah, in the States. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so then I can work on, I can show you other things I'm working on, like this one here. There's another one that I'm going through the process of doing. That's for this frame here, actually. <clears throat> so um, these, are, these are just ones that I'm working on. I, mean, I, can, I can walk you around the studio and you can see what I'm doing. I've got, about three studios here, not just one. This is just one I'm working at here because I can see outside. I've got big studios in there. 
and uh, I've got a stream over there where I go down and take photographs in the stream. And I can imagine birds being in there and other things such as that. I can put a model down there to walk through the stream, through the water. Many things to do around here. So, um, so I hope, hope you enjoyed that. Again, if you, if you want that painting, just make me an offer and it's a good one to learn from. And as I said, I would include the photographs. I'll, fa I'll scan those photographs, get, get them printed up, send them with that to you if you wanted it, right? If it, otherwise, it'll go off to a gallery somewhere else. And, uh, but as a learning, as an, example for lear as an example to learn from, it'd be perfect, all right? So we'll see you next time. Have a look on Facebook for the next transmission. Goodbye and enjoy yourself.